Welcome to the Tech Arena, featuring authentic discussions between tech's leading innovators and our host, Allison Klein. Now, let's step into the arena. Welcome to the Tech Arena. My name is Allison Klein, and we're coming to you from Lisbon at the Open Compute Platform Conference. I'm so excited to kick off this week with Maddie Backrend from Circle B. Welcome to the program, Maddie. Hey, thank you, Allison. Good to be here and uh, looking forward to this chat. So Circle B has been a huge name in data center infrastructure, but they've never been on the tech arena before. So can you just provide a little bit of background on the company and what is your relationship to OCP? Yeah, sure. So uh, Circle B has a long relationship with OCP. So actually Circle B was the first solution provider, OCP solution provider in Europe. They were founded in 2012. We are based in Amsterdam. And over the years, we've built up a long history with the OCP community, and there's just a lot of experience and knowledge around OCP in our company. So basically what Circle B does is we co-design and develop OCP solutions, and we innovate with our customers as well. We're really about that customer relationship and making sure that they get the infrastructure that they need. All of our taglines is revolutionary IT infrastructures, mm -hmm. which under the covers basically means OCP. And um, yeah, we're just looking to uh, um, create long lasting opportunities with our customers and so far so good. And we're excited to be here. We've, we've got a few things to uh, to show it to show as well. There's a bit of a sneak peek uh, going on right now. So we have a bit of a premiere at our booth. So yeah, a lot of good energy here. That's fantastic. You guys are talking on a topic that is near and dear to my heart this week, which is actual deployments. Yes. Can you give some highlights on what you're sharing at the, to the audience? Right, I will, but the presentation is not till later, so I'm not mm -hmm. going to, you know, spill all the beans yet. Um, but basically, one of the big OCP benefits is the uh, the time to deployment, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're so agile in deploying these racks. So we wanted to focus on that topic because we wanted to demonstrate that technological OCP benefit, but we also wanted to talk a little bit about our skills and our capabilities in mm -hmm. deploying those racks and in doing so. So really the story is about two customer deployments in which we had different challenges and how we handled those, anything from testing to transport to deployment. And um, I'm actually presenting that, that uh, class. So I'll share some learnings and we'll also share some in-house developed tools uh, that we use to deliver these uh, deployments successfully. Uh, one of them is actually a software tool, which you'll mm -hmm. download. So yeah, I hope you see uh, lots of people in there and we'll have some uh, nice surprises for them. That's fantastic. Now, one thing that I love about your company is that you're squarely focused on compute sustainability. We wrote a compute sustainability report in partnership with OCP last year. Yeah. Why is there such an emphasis and what are customers' perspectives that you're hearing when you talk to them about valuing a sustainable approach? Okay, that's a big question mm -hmm. with a long answer. So if I go too long, you stop me. This is really a big one. So right now the data center space is going through uh, what we call a twin transition, right? So there, on the one hand side, there's this need for digitization in society. And on the other hand, you know, there is this increased urgency around sustainability in the data center. So it's kind of a split, right? Because you need to build this, this so it's a, yeah, this, this big capacity demand. And on the other part, the more infrastructure you put in, the more power hungry, uh, the bigger your uh, footprint will be. The data centers have already done a lot of good things around sustainability, and they've really increased their efficiencies. I mean, you know, we can talk about PUE, and, you know, we can talk about that all day long. But bottom line is more is needed. On top of that, we're seeing some really big challenges come up. National power grid providers, you know, there's limited availability of power increased legislation on CO2 emissions. And again, capacity demand is on the rise. So it's, it's a real challenge. Now, what's interesting is that OCP is very power efficient. It's, it's a great design from an efficiency standpoint of view. So it's not going to fix all those problems. I think it's definitely going to help alleviate uh, some of those power and cooling challenges that we're seeing in data centers right now worldwide which is why I think OCP right now has a lot of wind in its sail when you mm -hmm. talk about sustainability, because here's actually something that's a fix. And in all these years, I know you've been active in the data center space for a long time. We've talked about optimizations around the infrastructure. This actually goes to the heart of it, the infrastructure itself. That's going to call it a pizza box that we had in the 19-inch rack. 
It's now an optimized server in the 21 chain inch band. Yeah, we think OCP right now is is a very important topic in you know the the sustainability lens. And don't forget, right, the compounding factor is AI, which mm-hmm. is right there on the hype cycle uh, right now, and it's driving a lot of innovation. But it's also driving increased power and cooling demand on the data centers. That's fantastic. I love this space. I've I've been working in data center sustainability before it was cool. I think that um I see what you did. Yeah, exactly. That was nice, wasn't it? I think that it's gonna be so interesting in twenty twenty four to see how this um topic tracks and especially across the SCP events because SCP mm. has taken such a front foot forward approach to sustainability. Now, I want to go into our next topic because I can't do a podcast without talking about it. We are at the point in where the industry is really propelling innovation to fuel AI based on customer demand. And at a speed, I think, you know, we're both industry veterans. I've never seen this kind of speed of mm-hmm. innovation before. Yeah. How do infrastructure providers like Circle B continue to innovate, keeping platforms in balance with that sustainability vision? And delivering per- the performance customers require. Yeah, so this is a huge challenge we have in front of us right now, and it's coming us at light speed. You're absolutely right. But not, it's just like warp speed here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like the next level. AI is right there on the top of the hype curve. And I mean, you know, the hype curve, right? It goes up, it's down, and you go to what is it, trough of disillusionment, mm-hmm. disillusionment, and then it kind of bottoms out. So I think we're at that point where we need to see, you know, what are the limitations and capabilities also on the infrastructure side of AI. I mean, every the talk of the town right now is large language models, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of possibilities there and a lot of innovation that's happening. But as you well know, to train one of these LLMs, it's massive in this infrastructure and it's a big investment, right? And that's definitely there for those who can afford it. And we have that capacity and ability to monetize it. But I think there will be many other use cases that will be based on AI, but not necessarily on a large language model Mm -hmm. where we'll see enterprises train their own models. Because remember, a lot of these enterprises sit on a mountain of data, right? The precursor to AI, big data was all about data and data lakes. And Mm -hmm. what do we do with the data? That data can now be used to train models and quality models because you know the data you have in-house. So it's going to be interesting to see how different industries and enterprises will build and consume AI for their own vertical and internal purposes. With regards to OCP, look, what one of the beauties, I think, of OCP is uh, once we see OCP products come to market, they're actually trialed and tested already by the hyperscapers, right? Mm-hmm. And mainly Meta, because they are basically the founding father of OCP. So um, these configurations will be a good fit for those enterprise customers that want to standardize and democratize AIs in a balanced way. Again, it's not going to fix the problem of GPUs being so power hungry as they are, but having power optimized at a rec level is going to help. A lot of discussions around GPU cards, right? PCI Express, but there's also the OEM modules. I don't hear a lot of talk about that one, but that's actually more power efficient. Uh-huh. So let me give you a sneak peek. We're actually demonstrating an IA training unit on our booth. We have a live unit here. So we're actually going to not just talk about this. We can show you this as well. And that's what Circle B is about, driving that innovation on OCP. That's fantastic. I'm going to definitely check it out in your booth. And Swing by, I would by love to see the power di- uh, differences to include in my uh, recap blog today. Now we're in Lisbon. As we're talking, literally the experts from the industry are streaming into the building behind us. Who are you most excited and what are you most excited to see this week in Lisbon? And how does that relate to the broader trends in the market that we've been discussing? Mm. Okay, so first of all, this is my first time at an actual OCP summit. So that's super exciting just to have the whole ecosystem in one place and, you know, meeting up with people that I've been talking to, to virtual screen or even yourself, right? Mm-hmm. We've, uh, we've known about each other, but never met. So. It's just a great place to meet up and, and network. I'm looking at the schedule. There are so many cool topics here. Uh, liquid cooling is, you know, right up there. Open RAN, CXL, OEMs, as we just discussed. Actually, the data center regulations, I think that's one to watch as well because they're going to become more stringent and really have an impact on how we define data center mm-hmm. architecture. Unfortunately, 
I don't have time to attend them all. And there's a bunch of customers here as well, which is, you know, uh, the mm -hmm. number one priority for us, as you can imagine. But I do have two favorite topics that I want to carve out some time for here. Uh, one of them is uh, DC MHS, because I think that's going to be a big topic. This talks about mm -hmm. modularity at a mm -hmm. board level, right? So yeah. now we're taking the OCP principle and we're bringing it into the node. I think that's super exciting, like Lego blocks just define what type of server you want to build and you kind of pull it together. Mm -hmm. That just makes so much sense. And there's a session on blind mate cooling that I definitely want to, uh, well, I, I just hope I can sit in on that one. Otherwise, I'll do the replay. I think that's a big one. As we head into this AI space, we see uh, DLC being the main sort of trend now for liquid cooling. And the fact that in OCP or over V3 racks, you have this standard basically for liquid cooling with blind mate i think it's going to tr attract the attention of a lot of data centers because right now there's a lot of different vendors that have different solutions if you can standardize that's always a win mm -hmm. so i think that's 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 definitely one to watch so yeah i think those two for me are kind of like the big ones yeah uh, you named series. you named all of the hot topics and i love the ones that you chose it's just a matter of finding the time for the sessions it's a great reminder that they're going to be available on replay one final question for you, Maddie, before we say goodbye. How can the audience learn more about the solutions that you discussed today, especially those new um, technologies that you're demoing and engage your team? Yeah, so first of all, I mean, uh, this is an easy one, right? We have a booth exactly for that reason to meet with customers, industry, and, and, and vendors, A22. So if you're here, swing by. You're welcome to visit and, and meet a team. We're here with a team of five people. We recently updated our website, which you can visit, right? So circle B, one word, dot EU. Have a look there, contact us there. I would also highly encourage you to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, LinkedIn is probably the best way to do it. Whenever there's news, we push it out there through social media. And it's a great way to stay in touch. And lastly, especially for the folks here in Europe, right? OCP is a community. So join those community calls. We have an EMEA OCP community call every month. Uh, Circle B always sits in. There's a number of other vendors and solution providers there, but hey, we're all a community. And I think the bigger this community becomes, the more powerful and, you know, the faster we'll adopt this technology in the industry. So I would, you know, just invite everybody to join those calls and be part of the gang. Maddie, it was such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much. We should need to do this again sometime. I'd love to. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining the Tech Arena. Subscribe and engage at our website, thetecharena.net. All content is copyright by The Tech Arena.